Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Jeff and welcome to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. It is Sunday, February the 20th, and today Pastor Rex will be sharing with us from the Word of God titled, The Apple of God's Eye. But first, please join us in some praise and worship music as we glorify the Lord. The 
the meaning of the idiomatic expression, apple of my eye. You heard that expression before, isn't it? Or maybe even used it. Not only heard about it, but maybe in several occasions in your life, you have used that expression, apple of my eye. Originally, it means the central opening of the eye. Figuratively, it is something or someone you cherish or precious to you above other else. That someone might be your spouse or a daughter or a son or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or grandchildren or even a high school crush. I know you went through high school crushes. You are smiling and yeah, it's true. We, we went through all of those emotions of life. When we think of the origin of this idiomatic expression, we think maybe apples could be seen as precious. And so you might look on a loved one the same way you look on a precious piece of apple. But why apple and not diamond, the woman's best friend? Or maybe for men, a shiny Harley Davidson. <laughs> you are the Harley Davidson of my eye. <laughs> that last one sounds weird, isn't it? Hey, Pastor, that joke is weird. <laughs> well, it will not work because that is not really the origin of the expression. It actually had to do with the eye itself, rather than something the eye look on or considered as precious. The saying is more on the apple of your eye, rather than the apple of my eye. Where does the saying apple of your eye come from? It came from the Bible. In Psalm chapter 17, verse 8, it says, keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. That's from the Bible, Psalm chapter 17, verse 8. So the apple of your eye comes from a Hebrew expression that literally means little man of the eye. And it refers to the tiny reflection of yourself that you can see in other people's pupils or eyeballs. 
if you look at it carefully. If you are talking with someone, just notice their eyes. Look at it. And you can see a tiny reflection of yourself inside their eye, the apple of your eye. Your eye is the most defenseless part of your body. You protect it by blinking. Your eyelashes help protect it too. That's why maybe some ladies put a longer eyelashes. When we think about this term, we should think of presence and protection. I'm kind of smiling because sometimes those eyelashes, fake eyelashes are about a pound each. Uh, sorry. <laughs> when we think about this term, we should think of presence and protection. Another scripture that used this expression is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verses 10 to 11. And Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 10 to 11 says, In a desert land he found him, in a barren and howling waste. He shielded him and cared for him. He guarded him as the apple of his eye, like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them aloft. So we are the apples of God's eye. He cares for us. God is present in our lives. If we ever look into God's eye, we can see our reflection inside it. I think we can stop there and we will call it a message for the day, isn't it? <laughs> you are the apple of God's eye. We are being protected by God. Like an eagle protects her young under her wings. Just like the prayer of David said in Psalm chapter 17, verses 8 and verse 9. We will go back to verse 8 and verse 9. It says, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are out to destroy me, from the mortal enemies. Who surround me. So this is David saying that, Lord, here are my enemies. They surround me. Please make me the apple of your eye. Put me under your wings. Protect me, please. In today's scripture, we can read some of the most beautiful assurances of protection from God ever recorded. David says in Psalm 17 that he is the apple of God's eye. What does this mean? It means that God will keep an eye on David and protect him. Why? Because David is precious to God. And maybe you are now trying to understand what that does mean to you. You are precious in God's eye as well. You are precious to God. You are the apple of God's eye. Now, let us read this chapter. Now that I got your attention and your interest, let's read this chapter, verses 1 and 2. This is a prayer of David. Hear me, Lord, my plea is just. Listen to my cry, hear my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from you. May your eyes see what is right. In these two verses, David was praying and appealing for justice. Hear me, listen to my cry. David was under attack by his enemies and cries out to the Lord and he, to hear him and listen to him. In verse 2, vindicate means to defend. That is what vindicate means. Defend me, Lord, from my enemies. The only source of David's def defense comes from the Lord and nothing else, not even from his own army. David is the apple of God's eye. Verses 3 to 5, Though you probe my heart, though you examine me at night and test me, you will find that I have planned no evil. My mouth has not transgressed. Though people tried to bribe me, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent. 
Through what your lips have commanded, my steps have healed to your path. My feet have not stumbled. So David was claiming innocence in support of the rightness of his case. He is not guilty of the ungodly ways of his attacker. He let God examine and test him. David did not plan any evil, as what he said in this prayer. No transgression in his mouth whatsoever. He did not collect bribe, and his ways were not violent. So David followed the commands from God's own lips. That is in verse 4. The very reason of verse 5, he said, My steps have held to your path. My feet have not stumbled. If you want your feet to not stumble, follow the commands from the lips of God. Verses 6 to 7 is the petition, I call to you, my God. I call to you, my God. For you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love. You who save by your right hand, those who take refuge in you from their foes. Oh, verse 6, it says, I call. You will answer. Don't hesitate to call on the Lord. No. Nope. Don't say, I'm ashamed or I'm embarrassed. Oh, I'm, I did something very wrong today. I will not pray. Nope. That's the opposite of what the Lord wants you to do. When you did something against Him, against His commands to you, that is the time for you to call. And when you call, He will answer. God's telephone will never be busy. God's telephone will not be busy. It will not say, Nick, if you want to know the schedule of our church services, dial one. If you want to know more about us, dial 2. If you want to listen to what we believe, dial 3. Now, the moment you call on the Lord, Hello, this is God. How are you today? He will not be busy to listen to you. So call on the Lord. Call on Him. <laughs> Amen. Call on Him. You will be answered. In these verses contain the petition of what David wants the Lord to do for him. His petition was motivated by David's trust in God and the Lord's great love, according to verse 7. Show me the wonders of your great love. God loves you. Remember, you are the apple of God's eye. He loves you so much. You are precious to Him. So when you call, he will not be busy. Verses 8 and 9, it says, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are out to destroy me, from the mortal enemies who surround me. So David was asking God to keep an eye on him and to hide him from his wicked enemies who are out to destroy him. David depend on God as his only source of help. Verses 10 to 12, they close up their callous hands, and their mouth speak with arrogance. They have tracked me down. They now surround me with eyes alert to throw me to the ground. They are like a lion hungry for prey, like a fierce lion crouching in cover. So these three verses mention the intention of David's enemies. They want to throw him down. They want him removed from his throne as king. That is what they are trying to do. They want to remove David as their king. We don't want you anymore. Get out of there. But they can't because David is the appointed king of God. His enemies were waiting for an opportune time to attack him, like a hungry lion crouching in cover, ready, ready to ambush his prey. And David said, Please, Lord, help me. Help me, protect me from them. Verses 13 to 15, Rise up, Lord. 
confront them, bring them down with your sword, rescue me from the wicked. By your hand, save me from such people. Lord, from those of this world whose reward is in this life, may what you have stored up for the wicked fill their bellies. May their children gorge themselves on it, and may there be leftovers for their little ones. As for me, I will be vindicated and will see your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. Can you see what David is saying? Those who hate him are of this world. They will stay in this world. And David said in verse 15, But as for me, I will see you face to face someday. So these last three verses are the concluding confession of confidence David has to God. God will rise up. God will bring down David's enemies. He will be vindicated. Even in death, David will awake to see God's face. And that is the Old Testament. The Old Testament preaches about the resurrection of the dead. That when we die here on this world, we will wake up in the presence of the Almighty God. You are precious to Him and you will see Him face to face. That last verse, verse 15, is a hint of the eternal destiny of the righteous. We will see God. They will see God's face. And maybe God was there smiling. I always want to see the face, those pictures of Jesus. I always wanted to see the Jesus who, was, who is a smiling Jesus. Not the Jesus that full, full of sadness in his face. Tears, blood flowing down his eyebrows and tears flowing down his cheeks. I'd rather see the Jesus that will welcome me and he was smiling at me. He is smiling at me. I like that kind of a picture of Jesus. And that's what even the Old Testament promises. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. Wow. Biblical scholars are unclear as to the time Psalm 17 was written in David's life. They don't know when. Either he was a young king or an old king. They don't know when. It is always nice for us to read Psalms and be inspired by them. This Psalm speaks to our greatest need of a God. And prayer is our only means of getting close to him, to call on him. To David, prayer that is filled with the pressure of the situation that he is in. Psalm 17 shows the greatness of God, but it also mentions the dark intent of his enemies. So when we pray, our soul is shielded, is protected. We are bringing sacrifice to God when we come to Him in prayer. It is a torment to Satan though. Satan is tormented when we pray to our loving Heavenly Father. When Satan hears us, hears us pray. <clears throat> See, he doesn't, like me to, he doesn't like me to say this. When Satan hears us pray, he, his tail is going right like that and he was running away there's power in prayer there's power in prayer there, there's power in calling on the Lord put that into not only your, your brain but all the way to your heart there is power in prayer Satan is afraid when Christians pray. Hmm. Prayer is the most powerful defense we have in times of stress. 
in times of needs, in times of afflictions, prayer is the most powerful defense for our soul. So David, David, prayer is his weapon against the attack of his godless enemies. So as David mentioned in his prayer in this psalm, Psalm 17, his enemies have callous hearts. His enemies, their words are arrogant. They have watched him with alert eyes to trap him. They have chased David down. They have surrounded him. They have thrown him. They want to throw him to the ground. They are like lions hungry for prey. Fierce lions ready to ambush him. When David feels the pressure of his enemies, he cannot help but to cry and pray out loud to the Lord. And David said in his prayer, Rise up, Lord. Confront them. Bring them down. Rescue me. Save me. I am the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. And that is our prayer right now as well. Rise up, Lord. Confront them. Bring them down. Rescue me. Save me. I am the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. What kind of pressures are you experiencing at the moment? What kind of pressures are you experiencing at the moment? What kind of storms of life are you going through? Claim as David did that you are the apple of God's eye. Claim it. Lord, that's me. I am the apple of your eye. God will protect you under his powerful wings. All you need to do is to pray and cry out to the Lord for help and protection. He will hide you under his wings. There is a song that says, Hide me now under your wings. Cover me within your mighty hand. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. And I will be still and know that you are God. Find rest, my soul, in Christ alone. Know his power in quietness and trust. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. And I will be still and know you are God. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we know that you are God. And we, as your children, are precious in your sight. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in to our Sunday service. If you've been blessed by today's message and you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click the notification bell to be notified of our future videos. If you would like to support this ministry with your offerings or donations, please send them to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene, 8499 North Dort Highway, Mount Morris, Michigan, 48458. Or now you can also show your support through donating at our Patreon page, which is located at patreon.com slash mosaicnaz. Please join us at our next service. We welcome you and your entire family, and you'll find us right across from Skateland here on Dort Highway each Sunday morning at 1030. We pray the Lord would bless you so that you then will become a blessing to others.